Well, I want to bring in journalist Peter Stockman to discuss how radicalization is taking hold in some parts of the city. He's the co-author of the book, The Jihad Caravan. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. You said you were, we were speaking there during that report, and you said you were actually hearing police sirens and activity all day. Still very much an intense manhunt here. Yes, exactly. And uh, just by arriving here, it's, it's very emotional to me as a Belgian. Uh, arriving I've, here at Place de yes, especially seeing all the media from all over the world covering my country. Uh, I've never experienced this feeling. And yesterday I was in the Brussels North train station and I saw uh, police checks and uh, checkpoints of the army checking people just to enter the train station. It reminded me of my visits to a country like Israel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of scary. Uh. And we've noticed the two, obviously, train stations, metro stops in front of hotels. You have full sort of combat gear, military personnel standing guard. Is this kind of going to be the new normal, do you think, for, for Brussels now, until it, until it addresses this threat? I think uh, the deployment of the army and police in the streets, it's meant, it's meant to give the citizen a sense of security, uh, to reassure people, but I think it cannot make a real difference in preventing attacks. Uh, this has to be done by the security services behind the screens, and there, Belgian security services have been um, struggling with a lack of means. So, uh, 100 additional soldiers is not going to solve that. What's going to solve it? More intelligence, more intelligence sharing, more policing? What's the answer here? Um, I think we haven't yet realized the depth of the situation in which we are in Europe. Um, 500 Belgians have left to Syria in the last five years. There they receive training, they become part of a network where a lot of weapons and expertise on making explosives is going round. Um, the, the security services haven't um, holed up, haven't ca catched up to this uh, level of a new level of threat in Europe, and the, the linkages between the Middle East and Europe are becoming increasingly up, clear. To the level of threat. Now, what we're seeing are increased raids. Clearly, yes. nine people arrested, six still in detention, three released. Based on raids we've covered before, probably a few more will be released as well. Do you get the sense now that security services are basically raiding, detaining, asking questions later because there's so much urgency? It, it might be, uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think every kind of uh, inf piece of information is being acted upon now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Whereas before that might not have been the case. Yeah, but I think we need to stress something deeper here. Um, the, the reactions of the security services are normal in a way in the short term, but I think we have to think deeply about the polarization effects in our society that's been taking hold now. I think hatred and prejudice against the Muslim community in Belgium is going to rise sharply now. And then it's very worrying the statements I heard from some prominent Belgian politicians who are polarizing and who are having the discourse of us versus them, who are pushing the Belgian as Muslims. In, as the non-Muslims and them being the some, Belgian Some Muslims. prominent Belgian politicians have been pushing the Belgian Muslim community to distance themselves from this act, while there have been Muslim people die in this attack. So to me, it is very strange that you hold an entire community responsible for the acts of a few criminals. And I think this us versus them rhetoric is going to damage the social fabric of Europe. And that's exactly what ISIS is, is aiming to achieve. But what's interesting is that you said on the one hand, there is a real urgent need for more policing, more intelligence gathering, for acting on any kind of tip. Because missing clues mm. leads to terrible tragedy. At the same time, it is creating a lot of social tension. Yes. Where's the balance there? I think now we need to act calmly, coolly, and just invest in the security services, their staff, their personnel, their expertise, um, so that we get a grip on the networks in Belgium, because it is a fact that in this city, my city, I feel shocked by it, that there are kind of uh, a lot of sleeping terrorist cells in this country, and we need to invest in our security services on the long term. Yeah. And we should not make the mistake of now acting too emotionally and thereby even harming the social fabric of our society. We need to protect this social fabric because in the long run, we might polarize an entire society, and this is more damaging. And Peter, I'm sorry, I want to jump in because a moment of silence has begun right now in this square. So we're going to just stop talking. Exactly. Our first responders. 
Red Cross firemen and firewomen here. Let's just stop yes. for a moment. My guest of Peter Stockman's is still here with us. I'm not going to speak very loudly because this is meant to be a moment of reflection, but these are essentially first responders. We have Red Cross workers, firemen, medical personnel who were the first to get to the scenes of the attacks. And in many ways, this is their first time to reflect because they've been working 24 hours a day. Yes. How do you feel as a, a native? You were born in Brussels? Uh, born Belgium? in uh, Belgium, but not in but, Brussels. Uh, but you're, but but it's you're my native. city. So. It's your city. How does it feel seeing this? You're being here today. I'm here for the first time, actually, on this square since uh, the attack happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very emotional to see this. Uh, I realize just now that this has happened to my country. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. Well, sometimes it takes a time. It takes a bit of time to digest and to come to this yes. realization. But even Peter's though I've yeah. been following this yeah. topic for five years and yeah. even longer, mm -hmm. but when it arrives in your own country, even yeah. though I have been uh, predicting this to happen, yeah. you know, when it actually happens, it's still a shock. It's a shock. Yeah. Peter Stockman, thank you. We really appreciate your time. Uh, we know you're busy as well reporting on this still very much developing story. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We'll let you go. Thank, thank you. you.